The following program was produced by an independent community producer. The opinions expressed do not necessarily reflect those of the QA TV staff or board of directors. QA TV, in compliance with FCC regulations, is prohibited from exercising control over the content of independent, member produced public access programming. Good morning, my name is Ryan McQuaid and we are here with Kaya Pokala. She's going to talk to us about textiles in the environment. Good morning, Kaya. How are you doing? Good morning. I'm doing good. How about you? Everything is good. Everything is good. Um, and when did you first start taking an interest in like the environment and taking care of our ecosystem? So when I was very little, I was outdoorsy a lot. And my mom would take me to like Mass Audubon, like all the homeschool programs and a lot of different programs having to do with the outdoors and the environment. So I was very interested in doing a lot of um, outdoorsy things. I loved hiking and being outdoors. It's just really nice. And um, uh, we also need to be very careful with how we take care of our environment because we're we in order for it to take care of us we need to take care of it so that's also something very important that i've been looking into yep um so what exactly is recycling textiles for for regular people that don't really um don't really know what they're you what they're supposed to do with their clothes or any excess, you know, fabrics they have laying around, what should they do to it? So things you can do is you can go to your local thrift store, which honestly, they have really good clothes if you go there and they're for a cheap price. Um, you can go to the thrift store, ask if they take donations and if they take clothing. And some people tend to have uh, um, higher, like they need to make sure it's good quality doesn't have holes in or stains because nobody yeah. really wants that if you get what I'm saying. Yeah. Um, you can do to uh, quilt, people who do a lot of quilting because they love, well, quilting, obviously you need fabric and some people can't afford brand new fabric, but they still love to do it. So you can donate to your local quilt, air, quilting people. Um, you can donate clothing to pet, not pet stores, uh, animal shelters because they'll take in clothing for, um, you can, they can use it as rags and they can make beds out of pillowcases or old shirts. Wow. Um, you can also make shirts and pillowcase beds for the dogs and cats there by putting some fabric like chunks of fabric inside and sewing the seams up so that it's comfy for them and they can have something in then you're also reusing textiles so that's great um you can do it give um no you can ask your local homeschool groups or art teachers because they love doing crafts crafts and you can look at some schools that do art programs or sewing classes because they really do appreciate every little piece of fabric they get because their students really love doing sewing. Um, you can also do rag companies that will take 12 by 12 uh, fabric squares to use. I think it can be bigger than 12 by 12. It has to be at least 12 by 12. Um, yeah. All right, awesome. Yeah, I know we talked about before just recycling textiles and how important that is. You know, even if you gave it to an art school, how important, I don't know how significant that could be, you know, just to continue to, to push that. Um, okay, so let's talk about, like, you know, washing our clothes and how, how much an effect that has on the ocean and how people don't really know what they're putting into their, their clothes and how they could be in, ingesting all the chemicals, you know, in a cycle later on with eating fish and stuff, right? Yeah, so each time you wash your clothes, there's a bunch of microfibers depending on the type of material your clothing is. And a lot of it, about 60% of your clothing is plastic. So that's leaching out from your washing machine into the sewer system. And eventually it'll go into your oceans. And then think about it. The fish are eating it. You're right. Eating it. <laughs> You're right. eating what you put out, 
So if you want to put out good things, then you're going to be eating good things. So it's just to be very aware what you're putting out into the world because that's what you're going to be end up getting back. Like you said, you should to donate to schools if we need to. So if you have any extra clothes, you can donate to your local school or your art school. Um, definitely. That's awesome. Um, so do you know how much water it takes for um, a, a company to make jeans? Yeah, so it takes roughly about 800 gallons of water to 150 to produce the cotton crops to make it all the way to the gene stage with all the um, chemical, well, some chemicals they'll put in and then like dyes because they have to mix it with water most of the time. So between that process, it takes about 800 to 150 gallons, yeah, 100 1,500 gallons of water, sorry, um, to make a single pair of jeans. And the whole entire, like, with all the companies that are doing that, that's about 450 billion gallons of water, which I believe could cover the state of Delaware in a foot of water, which is like, wow. You could really think about that. So, um, also, one thing before we move on about the yeah. uh, washing machines for yeah. instead of using like chemicals to like get your clothes brighter or like keep your dark clothes dark, you can use white distilled vinegar and it'll get rid of mildew odor, um, pet lint and pet hairs. It'll also get rid of, um, uh, what else? She said white distilled vinegar? White distilled vinegar. It's White very distilled clean. vinegar. Okay, got it. And it'll get rid of odors, pet hairs. It will whiten and reduce the odor of your clothing. It will also soften your clothing, which is like great. Um, it's also you can use it for a high efficiency uh, washing machine, washing machines, <laughs> and standard washing machines. Right. So, and it's also good for your the the hold on hold on. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Yes, yeah, it's very good for the septic tanks and the environment too. Okay, so Levi Strauss and Co. They do um, a really good job on their jeans and clothing. So um, they, um, what they are doing is they are doing uh, a. <laughs> they're reducing the amount of water they need to make the jeans. So it's like 98% less water than the normal company makes, which is amazing. So, um, and it also, they, what they are doing, they're, um, what they're working towards is to make the jeans last longer and but have them in a way that it's not like adding more chemicals or using more plastic or worser materials that will last longer and have more harm but it's like they're reinforcing them in a way that will help them last longer but will still be good for the environment which is great um alternate alternate oh gosh Alternative apparel, <laughs> um, they're using organic cotton and they're recycling um, material, like uh, they're recycling materials so that they can reuse them again. They're getting recycled materials to use them in their clothing, which is great. Um, packed, um, the entire manufacturing process follows organic guidelines and they're also fair trade certified, which is great and means that the workers who are making the clothing have a good, they get good income back to them or wages instead of like $2 a day to like some people get one to $2 a day. And that's most of the women and children who are in the factories in India, in Bangladesh, so, where a lot of incidents happen with the buildings falling, which is really heartbreaking because they're putting their life into this so that we can have the newest trend, so to say. Um, I would just imagine what kind of environment they're working in too, which is... Yeah, the buildings are really unstable. They have very bad working conditions. They often get go deaf because of all the sound going on. They often have a lot of lung problems, especially with the people working in the dyes and chemical area because they're always breathing that in and 
a lot of companies are very greedy and don't want to provide their workers with um, the provide the protective gear like masks or eyewear so they aren't like breathing it in or like leaching into their eyes. Um, yeah. So H and M conscious, they have um, an aspect that lessens its environmental impact. It has organic cotton and it recycles polyester. They use recycled polyester, which is great. Um, Polo Ralph Lauren. Okay. So it is all their clothing. A lot of their clothing is made out of recycled water bottles. They take so I think it was like in the year 2025, they will have over 170 billion water bottles taken out of the dump. Like that's how many they've kept out of the uh, trash lots, which is great. That is so, amazing. <laughs> and they also <laughs> don't require water in the dyeing process, which is really good. So that it doesn't, the dyes don't get into the sewer system, which leads into the ocean. So that's really good too. If you didn't um, get any other thing from this video, just know that go get yourself some Polo Ralph Lauren and they yeah, can sponsor this video. <laughs> yeah. Hashtag sponsors. Okay. <laughs> okay. So ABLE, they focus on fighting poverty by offering fair wages and um, creating jobs for women, which is great. Um, and then for the detergents that we're going over, I believe, um, we got seventh generation, which is biodegradable and it's plant based, which is a really good one. And it's really nice to use. I can say for one, cause I use that. It's great. Um, drops pods. They have their little pods. It's like 19 cents per pod. So that's like one pod per wash so to say. Um, and that's eco-responsible packaging, no necessar unnecessary filters or dyes, and it's also free of carbon neutral shipping. So nice. And you've used it. And it's, it's pretty good, right? Some of oh, these yeah. They're really good. Um, True Earth Laundry Strips. These are all eco-friendly, which is great. Um, the Laundress Sport Detergent, Miss Myers Clean Day Laundry Detergent, and bio clean laundry detergent there's a lot more but i don't have that much room on my book to write it all down. <laughs> so <laughs> there's a lot more you just have to look like biodegradable laundry detergents or eco-friendly laundry laundry detergents just look it up on the web you'll find it um let's see can we talk about some other chemicals to you know shy away from yes so i'm gonna terribly pronounce these don't add me. just go for it Let's go for it okay so sodium laureth sulfate sodium laureth wait hold on sodium laurel sulfate sodium laureth sulfate sodium laurel ether sulfate chlorine bleach ammonium sulfate dioxane Optical brighteners, UV brighteners, it's NPE. And the Netflix series, right? That talks yeah. about everything. Yeah, so The True Cost is a good movie to watch. It goes over like all the conditions the worker has, workers have to go through, their daily life, all the, um, the whole entire process of like from the make, picking the cotton, making it into materials, dyeing it, sewing it up, and shipping it out, then like having all the clothes that aren't used or aren't sold by like the next week shipped to India to get burned, which then that pollutes our ecosystem and our air and we're breathing that in and I'm not really a fan of breathing in burnt clothing. So yeah, sorry. I, don't, I don't know if I am either. Maybe maybe it's just us. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, maybe it is. So were we also going to be going over um, farmers in? Oh yeah, GMO? sure. Go ahead. Talk about the farmers. Okay. So with GMO cotton, cotton uh, <laughs> by Monsanto they are making it so it is not being able to farmers aren't being able to plant it next year because it's genetically modified which means it'll only last for one harvest 
which puts farmers in a lot of debt and worry and stress because they have to use a bunch of different pesticides and herbicides to make the um, GMO cotton grow because it requires a lot of different things compared to our um, traditional organic cotton, which seeds over and over and over and over again cost a lot less and you don't have to buy a bunch of different products in order to plant it. So um, uh, hundreds of thousands of farmers have died in India after having been forced to switch to GMO cotton because Monsanto is um, forcing people to do that uh, instead of traditional cotton crops. Seeds are also very expensive. The cotton ones are very expensive, which is also another big reason why most farmers do kill themselves over it because they're in massive debts and then they have to sell the land and then they end up killing themselves because then they want to be able to have their family live on and provide them life, which is sad, but it's true and it happens. And it also takes a lot more maintenance to keep the cotton alive. And um, nationally, in the last 20 years, over 300,000 farmers, excuse me, have killed themselves due to the debt of um, cotton, GMO cotton. And um, it's produced by American Ag Agricultural Biotech. Okay, so giant Monsanto farmers put themselves into huge debts. However, the crops, if the crops do not pay, like if they don't produce enough each year, then the farmers will actually, what they'll do is they'll take the pesticides they use and they'll drink that to poison themselves. And then that's how most of them go, which is very sad. Um, yeah. So they also use a lot of some of that in um, the true cost. So yeah, you can take a look at that. And then there's an also another one that is on YouTube that you can look at. It's called the marketplace. It's like 20 minutes to watch. It just goes over like some of the um, stores that will do like what they actually do and like just to open your eyes to more things, if you know what I mean, right? Um, do you want to share your YouTube video? It's uh, how to make quick and easy textile face masks. Okay, so that's how to find it on YouTube. Kaya Pakala, search it up. Go figure out how to make your quarantine mask. Be healthy. You know, strive to be a better, a better recycler. And um, that's that's pretty much it. So I'm Ryan McQuaid. This is Kaya Pakala. Um, you know, go check out the YouTube videos and just be conscientious of what you're putting into your washer and dryer machine and what you're putting out into the environment. And if that's all, then I guess we might have a little conversation in a few months, see how things are going. But yeah, uh, thanks, Kaya. Thank you so much, Ryan. It was great talking to you. Great talking to you too. I'll talk to you soon. Yeah. Thank you so much. All right. See you.